Guys, it's Chris Ridden with you, welcoming you to today's United Kingdom talk. From the Mirrorball Studio in Royal Berkshire, this is Chris Reardon. It certainly is. A warm welcome along to you, as always, especially to any new listeners or viewers, of course, because we have viewers as well now on YouTube. A warm welcome along to you. The email address, if you want to join in at any time, it's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Let me just move my microphone slightly. There we are. Now, I've got, as I say, I've still got <coughs> all these things <coughs> to talk about that we didn't do last time, but there is still a stack of emails. So I'll do emails first, OK? Because we must get through these. Um, and on the last programme, uh, we were halfway through a letter from Brian, which I didn't have time to finish, unfortunately. Uh, so here we go. Uh, halfway through your email, Brian. Now, you see, people who are new won't know anything, won't know the other half of the letter. This is why I've said to you before, this programme is like a book. It's like a big storybook, and you open it, and if you miss a chapter in a book, it's ever so annoying, so don't miss a programme. <clears throat> Very important that you don't miss a show. If you ever do, then just go to the main United Kingdom Talk website. That's unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and you can find all the old shows there going right back to October 2005, OK? So starting halfway down Brian's email... Um, he did sort of finish the first paragraph. He says, one thing I warn you about certainly seems to be true that the older you get, the faster the years seem to whiz by. Don't worry about it, though. You just get the motor out of it each year while you're blessed with good health. I do, really. But, you know, Brian, <clears throat> it's, it's a thing with me that I've always had that um, I, I work too much. I do far, far too much. Barely ever do I have time to sit down and watch television. Now, I've got the aerial man coming tomorrow. I told you I've had, having problems with the TV aerial. Now, unfortunately, the aerial is in such a position on the roof that I can't get to it because there's, like, my house. My, my house, the wall to the house, and then there's an extra bit with, like, a, a, a lean-to, right, that comes out like that, and the aerial is here, and I can't get the ladder there, which involves... means someone has to walk on the roof. Uh, so... I've called someone out to have a look at that. I'm pretty sure the fault's up there because whenever it's windy, the picture starts flashing and everything. And we have a digital TV here in the UK now. So I'm changing up. Well, <clears throat> I have been trying to change over to that. The aerial. Uh, the, there is a new aerial up there that was put up around about this time last year. But in all honesty, I think it was a bad job done. And the picture has never really been good. I, sorry, that's that's wrong. The picture, digital pictures either work or they don't. There's no sort of bad picture. It either works or it doesn't work. And you can be watching it and suddenly it'll go it'll go off, and it's most distressing. Or the or the sound, it it's, it starts going a little bit like that. So we are in the process here in the UK. They have now started moving over to complete digital television. Um, so that's why I want the thing working. So someone coming tomorrow to do that, all right? But as I say, you know, um, with the amount that I work, I barely have time to watch the television anyway, so I don't know why I'm bothering to have it fixed. Where's my tissue? I've still got this... I mean, it goes on and on, doesn't it, this cold? <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not so sure it's a cold. I don't feel it ill or anything. It's a sinus thing. I've always had it. I mean, we virtually have this conversation every show now, don't we? It's awful. Don't worry, my vi my Vix is standing by this time. I won't have to disappear into the bedroom. I've surrounded myself, hopefully, by everything that I need. There's a, a hooded top in front of me, in case I get cold. There's the Vix, there's the tissue. And, you know, I've got a feeling this is the same tissue as I had in the other show. It's good, isn't it? You see how I reuse things? A whole tree had to be cut down for that one tissue. It's shocking. I mean, it makes me die how people waste money, dear, filling out little bits of paper all over the place. I mean, council offices are the best. What a waste of time they are. Council and government offices, thousands... Of, they go on about us saving energy. Have you ever gone past the Houses of Parliament or anywhere like that? Lights blazing, dear. Blazing. I mean, I thought it was the birth of another sun, to be honest, coming out of there. God's sake. Anyway, back to the email, Brian. <clears throat> I'm digressing again, aren't I? Oh, I don't mean to. Stop moaning, dear. Stop moaning. 
He says, um, here we go. Now for something completely different. He says, since no one seems to have responded to your weight of sound versus weight of air question yet, as a retired mechanical engineer, I'll give it a go. See, they're all here. When you think about it, all our United Kingdom talk friends and listeners, we all do different things, don't we? We're all possibly experts in your own field. And Brian is a mechanical engineer. Really, if we all got together, friends and listeners to United Kingdom talk, what we could do, all put a bit of money in the pot and buy a town. Right? We would completely buy a town. Yeah, you know, nothing too big, possibly... Something like Sydney. I think well, we go for Sydney, shall we? I mean, it, for God's sake, it can't be that more expensive. Not for people of a United Kingdom talk. We could afford to buy Sydney, couldn't we, in Australia? Anyway, so we'd all move there. Ev evacuate, not evacuate, uh, evict all the people in Sydney. And then we all move in there. And because of all our different skills, we could just do jobs for each other and never have to pay for anything. Oh, that'd make me happy. You know I don't like to shell out, dear. What do you think? Is that a good idea? And, of course, uh, Brian's going to be the mechanical engineer. He says, air is a mixture of gases, mostly oxygen and nitrogen, and does indeed have a weight. Now, the reason this question came up was because of my microphone. We couldn't decide, is it better to have the microphone hanging above me? I won't do it now because... Oh, by the way, did you notice I I fixed it? I did... Hang on a minute. Look. I fixed the microphone. What the microphone... Underneath the microphone, it's like a cat's cradle of bits of elastic. And the whole idea... Oh, hang on a minute. Something's uh, not right there. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. That's it. Chris will fix it. And my, my mini mirror balls are hanging from it as well. That's better. Sorry, that's it, that's better. That wasn't right. There we are. Let me just put that back on there. Yes. Um, the microphone kind of sits in two bits of elastic, which are formed like a, almost like a cat's cradle. And the idea is, if I knock the table, you can't really hear it. I mean, you can hear that, but if I, like, you know, do that, you, you can't hear the banging. Now, if the microphone was attached on a microphone stand onto the table, then you would definitely, you would be able to hear it <clears throat> quite badly. So that's the whole idea of this. Well, the other day I was mucking about with a microphone and um, the, the entire thing just fell apart. So I nearly ordered a new one and I thought, no, there must be some way of putting this back together. And I have managed to actually repair that. So I'm quite pleased about that. Now, the reason this question came out, as I was saying, uh, was should I have the microphone below my mouth or above it? Which is the better position? And that's why uh, Brian's answering this question. I've got each year again. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's all going wrong. Oh, my ear. Oh, I, I, oh. I've started doing the noises again, incidentally. Funnily enough, there was some <laughs> there was someone who came to the karaoke night. Oh, I've got a story to tell you about the karaoke night as well this week. I'm I'm not happy, not happy at all. I'll tell you about that later. Very 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 disappointed with uh, with uh, a, a couple of people actually in there. Uh, one, oh, they're not friends. Uh, one one is someone that I've bumped into a few times at various different karaoke nights. And uh, the other was someone, I don't think I've spoken, I've known him for years and years, but never actually spoken to him. So I'll tell you about that later. Oh, and the video thing went wrong at the uh, karaoke. Where's my pen gone? Just a minute. I've got to write these things down, otherwise I'll forget. Uh, video, video thing. So I'll tell you that later on, OK? Um, and that's why we want to know, should the microphone be down or up? Does, and I was asking, does sound, is it, Heavier or lighter than air? Oh, my ear's really bad. Oh, just a minute. Let me go. I, I ought to get the eardrops, really, shouldn't I? Now, uh, he says, air is in... I've said this already. Air is a mixture of gases, mostly oxygen and nitrogen, and does indeed have a weight. Sound, on the other hand, is a series of air pressure waves did you know i bet you didn't know this see we're doing science programs as well now i can do anything 
science programmes, mathematical programmes, English programmes, religious programmes. I'm doing them all. I should have been a teacher. What do you reckon? Would I make a good teacher? I mean, do you think the students would worry if now and again I started making noises? That's the cat one. Do you like my impression of a cat? Shall I do it again? Yeah. I mean, Suko in New York did write to me once and said to me, do you worry that people at art are laughing at you rather than with you? I said, I couldn't care less as long as they're laughing, dear. <laughs> You've got to be able to do anything to make people laugh. That is why I am on this planet, to desperately try and make people smile and laugh. Of course you get some people who do nothing but criticise. You see them in your local paper, wherever you are in the world, you open the paper and there they are, the critics. The critics. Overpaid fat cats who sit on their bums all day long criticising everyone else. Why? Because, sadly, they have no actual talent themselves. They just see their quit And it does annoy me, does annoy me, when some youngster has gone on stage somewhere and given it his all, it might not have been best at it, given it his all, and the fat cat critics sit there in their national newspaper criticising these poor kids on the stage. That really annoys me, that does. I don't, I don't read them. I don't really read them anymore. I'm really sorry. I know it doesn't look good, me poking my ear out like this with my finger, but it's itching like madness. It will stop. And the itch goes all the way down there. It's been like this for years. Terrible. It's one of those... I, I think it's to do with DJing, to be honest, this itchy year. Both of them. Sometimes it's the other one. Uh, but, you know, I mean, DJs, we get itchy ears and maybe go a bit deaf after a while. <sighs> If you're a miner, you get lung cancer, so I don't suppose it's a bad trade-off, trade does it, eh? You know, each job has its, has its own things. I, could, I couldn't go down a mine, could you? <gasps> oh, no, thank you. Oh, my God, going down all, all that, all, under all that, all, all that earth. Oh, no, and potholers. Potholers, why? Why do they do it? They go down these little holes in the middle of rocks... Oh, and they crawl around on their hands. Looking at what? Rocks! <laughs> What's all that about? They go down inside a rock to look at rocks. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Call me old fat. Is there something I'm missing here? What goes down in those holes? Is there some sort of mass fun party down there or something like that? Eh? What's going on in those little holes? Some sort of naked thing? <laughs> You won't get me going down there, I'm telling you that now. Oh, it's it's scary. And you hear those stories, don't you? People who die down potholes because they mistimed it. Or they say, you know, they were suddenly down there and suddenly the place filled with water. <gasps> oh, no, thank you. You won't get me down one of those potholes or down a mine shaft. Now, back to the email. It says, uh, Brian says, Sound emanates from a source in a pattern dependent upon the number of factors, mostly the shape or the configuration of the sound emitter. Is that what I am, Brian? A sound emitter? <laughs> Chris Reardon... Oh, I could add that to my list, couldn't I? Chris Reardon, international celebrity, award-winning DJ, landlord global broadcaster, environmental conservationist, pilot, connector, master of merriments, uh, sound emitter, and your fairy godmother. I like it. I mean, the list just goes on and on, doesn't it, dear? It's never going to finish. Brian says, in the case of the human voice, I'm not so sure if I fall into that category, Brian, do I? Human? <laughs> Maybe I do. I would think that if you speak with your head more or less level, oh, then the sound volume, uh, sound volume level you would pick up with a mic placed a few feet in front, say one foot above a horizontal line projected from the height of your mouth. Well, have I got to get a blooming ruler right now? God almighty, this is very scientific. You get on well with Anthony, Brian, my friend Anthony. Oh, yes, he likes everything done properly. It's all analysed. Everything is analysed with Brian, uh, with Anthony. You ca He's constantly analysing everything, dear. 
I, I'm not like no, I'm not like that at all. Dear. I just, I just take things as they are, and that's it. If it's like that, I, it's not a reason for everything. So what are you saying? Should we try this now? At the moment, how far is this microphone? It's about six inches from my mic, isn't it? From my mouth, and it's just below. Now you're saying, if you speak with your head more or less level, what? Like not moving like that. I'll be like uh, one of those, um, what are they called? Those things in shop windows. Mannequins, weren't I? I'm not, what, I'm not allowed to move. We've got to have a bit of movement, Brian, haven't we? We can't just sit here like statues. I wonder if I'll ever end up like a statue on top of a column, like Nelson's Column or something like that in Trafalgar Square. Eh? I'd be quite like that. Yes, maybe you could encase me, when I go, encase me in stone and put me on top of uh, St Paul's Cathedral. I could become a lightning conductor. Yes! I just put my hand up. Who's that girl you got in the, um, in the, uh, in the water in New York? What's that one with her hand up in the air? What's her name? Statue of Liberty, that's it. She, is she a lightning conductor? She'd conduct lightning. I could do that in London. On the same book, I'd just stand like that, wouldn't I? You know, with my hand in the air, waiting for another strike. <laughs> All right, let's try this then. I think if you would speak with your head more or less level, okay, like that. I've got to do it like this now, haven't I? Level head, hang on, I've got to bring my bit of paper around here, so that's it. Mustn't look down. That's, then the sound volume you would pick up with a mic placed a few feet in front. Well, it's only one foot. Oh, you say one foot above a horizontal line projected from the height of your mouth. Oh, compared to one, a mic positioned one foot below that line would be near enough equal. Oh, OK, so it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if it's, if it's up there or down there. Can you hear my microphone creaking? Listen, it's not too bad, actually, is it? No. While I was while I was um, setting up for the uh, Bingay last night at the not last night on Monday night at the Golden Lion, uh, where I am every every Monday night, get the advert in here. Yeah. Bingay every Monday night at eight o'clock at the Golden Lion. Have a look at the website today, okay? Bingay dot com, b i n g a y dot com. While I was setting up for that, you see, I have I get I get the prizes and I carry them from the car into the pub. Now I have to cross a busy road to do that. Uh, because at the time I arrived there is parking meters and all that. And um while I was I could I could hear this squeaking noise. And I thought, what on earth is that? And I looked on the road and it was a cyclist. I thought, my god, he can never never have put oil on that bike in his entire life. What a it's ever so funny. Yeah, we have to park on parking meters when when I get there, because the parking restrictions you have to put money in parking meters until 6.30 at night, and after that it's free. And you have to be so careful. Do you know there are some parts of London now that have cameras? You know, you, I've gone on about the speed cameras before. They've got cameras now to stop people parking. Yeah, you can park. Don't even have to have a traffic... We have traffic wardens in the UK. Now, what are traffic wardens? OK, if you are parked illegally, these people walk around all the time, and if you're parked illegally, they write out a ticket and put it on your car, just like the police in New York. We have traffic wardens, OK? And I think the police can do it as well. Or well, now, new, certainly in Westminster Council, they have traffic cameras. You, I can't believe it, can you? Traffic cameras, which are positioned at various points. And if you park illegally where one of these cameras are, guess what? Yes, you get a parking ticket. And there was no one even there. No one. Anthony loves it. My friend Anthony, he loves it. He loves it when some, someone's done something like a minor thing like that. And he will argue until he's blue in the face the rights of government. Oh, I get sick to death of it, dear. Sick to death of it. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. Be people being caught on camera. Didn't you, love? <laughs> you wait till you do something wrong. I shall laugh my head off. Wouldn't that be funny, actually, if you laughed so much your head fell off? I wonder if it's ever happened. 
If anyone, if it's going to happen to anyone, it'll happen to me. And if you laughed your head off and it came off, would it still be laughing when it fell off on the floor on its own, not attached to the body, or would you be dead? Interesting thought. Answers by email, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, all right? Now, back to the email, eventually. In most cases of the human voice, I would think... Oh, oh we've done that bit. Say one foot above a horizontal line projected from the how to do it. Uh, it should make no difference that you have lowered the mic. Shall we just try that? I'm going to count to ten now, boys and girls. Let's see. <clears throat> when we get to five... My microphone will be level with my mouth. So let's see if it makes any difference at all, OK? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the microphone is above my head. And now we're going back down. When I get to five, OK, when I get to five, it's directly in line with my mic. When I get to one, it would be below my mouth, OK? <clears throat> Clearing the voice. Here we go again. At the moment, it's in sight. Here we go. Ten, nine... Uh, you have to ignore... Oh, sorry, I'll start again. You have to ignore the little squeaking bits because that's the spring at the back, what holds it all together. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. What do you reckon? I bet it made no a blind bit of difference where that microphone was, did it, eh? <laughs> oh, never mind. It's worth trying. Thank you for that, Brian. Let me just have one of these. Across the UK and across the world, from the Mirrorball studio in Royal Berkshire, this is Chris Reardon. Now, Brian finishes his email. He says, in the lower position, however, I suppose there could be some slight effect if there is a desk or other hard... Sorry, other hard surface adjacent to reflect the sound waves. Oh, well, there was a desk straight below me here. A desk over there. There's flat walls everywhere. Yes. I suppose... Um, I guess also that you would be more likely to pick up other extraneous noises from things you might be doing with your hands. What a liberty. Oh, can you hear my hands? Yeah, click those fingers. Keep them coming, Chris. Great listening from, from Biker in Burlington, Ontario, Canada. He's in Canada. Yes. Thank you for that, Brian. You see? We've got I've got my own. You you are now named Chief Engine. That's what we should do. Now let me get a bit of paper. Everyone needs a job. Everyone who's listening to the programme needs a, a, some sort of title. So Brian. Guess what you've just become? Chief Engineer, right? Brian, I've got to write this down. So if you can email me in with what job you can do for me, and then we, we get a little community going here. That's a good idea, isn't it? Doesn't matter where you are in the world. OK, Brian... Uh, hang on a minute. Brian, let me write down where you are. Ontario. There's an Ontario in Italy, isn't there? I've been there. Is it Ontario? One minute, hang on. Let me, let me check this email. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. O-N-T-A-R-I-O. Ontario, Canada. Oh, my little mirror ball's fallen down. I've got, I've got a mini mirror ball. Mini mirror ball, look. <laughs> I'll just attach that to the microphone. There we are. Uh, that's it, Ontario, Canada. Chief Engineer. All right. Oh, can we have more than one Chief Engineer? I bet we've got some other engineers listening. Uh, well, I'll, 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 and we'll see, we'll see what sort of list of people we can get here, OK? So, Brian, Brian is the first one on the list. He is our Chief Engineer in Canada. Where are you? What job can you do? Where well, we need to... We're, we're building up a little, little list of jobs that people are to do with United Kingdom Talk. Do let me know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Anyone listening in hospital? Huh? What can you do for me? What job? What, what, what is going to be your position here at United Kingdom Talk? Let me know. Write me a letter if you want to. The address is coming up in a second. Get your pens ready. Tameside. What about people at Tameside? You're nice and near, aren't you, eh? 
Won't take you long to grab a tra train and come down here to Royal Berkshire. Yes. Come on. Tameside people, what job can you... What, are, what is your job? Can be anything. Can be anything. If you work in a fast food place, you could be head of fast foods. We all need fast foods now and again. I don't... No, don't get me wrong. I don't eat them any day, but n every day. But now and again, I do like a little bag of chips, darling. Or maybe a, you know, maybe a little beef burger. Yes. Chief of fast foods. Doesn't matter what job... If you, are you a cleaner? That's fine. Everywhere needs cleaners. The Mirable Studios needs a cleaner. God, do I know it needs a cleaner here. Just let me know what you do. Either by email... Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk or by postal address, are you ready? The postal address is Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, that's B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, -L, Berkshire, RG12, no, I've done, oh, I nearly got that wrong then. RG429ED, United Kingdom. Give it to you again, all right? Sorry, I got that wrong then. I did that the other week, didn't I? It's Chris Reardon, United Kingdom Talk, P.O. Box 4073, Bracknell, B-R-A-C-K-N-E-L-L, -L. RG42 9ED and at the bottom right United Kingdom. All right? Okay, onward we go. It's look, it's Gavin. It's our Gavin all the way from Australia. Hello Gavin. Where have you been? I thought you were dead. I wonder where you were, dear. <laughs> And Gavin writes, "Hey there, long time no here. I know that, dear. You ever got to tell me that?" People do that, though. Sometimes they stop emailing, and then uh, you hear from them, like, six months later. I haven't heard from Gavin for... Oh, it's got to be nine months at least, isn't it, Gav? Anyway, he says, I do hope you're doing well with your sounds, like you're keeping busy with the radio shows and everything. Yes, certainly am. You know me. I don't stop, dear. Hope this email reaches you in time to wish you a very happy birthday. Well, it, 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 it did. It did, but I've been very lax. I've been chatting so much about other things... I didn't have time to do all the cards and things, so sorry. Hope it's one big party, lots of prezzies, fun, laughter and frivolity. We do like frivolity, don't we? Hope you've been keeping well and enjoying the lovely English weather while we swelter in this damned heat and humidity in Australia. That's from Gavin. Yeah, um, the English winter over the last few years has changed big time, Gavin. We no longer get the long periods of very, very sharp cold weather. We get maybe a few days at a time and then it reverts to being reasonably mild. In fact, today it's been, we've had some lovely weather recently. Bright sunshine, unbroken skies, certainly we have here at. Oh, I don't believe this. I believe it. Hello? Hello, this is Chris. Hello? Oh, no. No one. No. That. That was a hang up. That one. I wonder who it was. Should we just start? I mean, I can, I can. You see, I can dial um a number to find out who it was. Oh yes. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's. I'll keep an eye on that. Shall I leave the phone off the hook? What do you reckon? Will that help? I think that's what I'm going to have to do because this is just ridiculous, and I'm going to turn the other one off as well. I'm fed up with these interruptions now. I, mean, I don't mind now and again, but it just goes on and on. Look at the other show, the last show that we did. Every five minutes that phone was ringing, wasn't it? So there we are. Um, yes, Gavin, uh, we, we've had some... So I keep saying er today, must stop that. We've had some lovely weather, beautiful unbroken skies and shun sh uh, unbroken... Yeah, unbroken uh, uh, blue skies... Really nice weather recently, and we don't get the seasons like we used to. Certainly not um, when I was a child in the seventies and eighties, when we had a, it was cold or hot, you know, and it, and it went on for ages. Nothing, nothing like that now. But you say you know you don't like the damn heat and humidity. 
Uh, I know, it's, the grass is always greener on the other side, isn't it? I was saying to someone only the other day, I make no secret of the fact that I'd love to live and work in Australia. Gavin, I really would. I really would love to work in Australia. And I heard on the news the other day there were 5,000 Brits now a week leaving the UK to go to Australia. I don't know how true that is. I haven't done any research on that at all. But 5,000 Brits a week. And I was talking to one of your um, fellow countrymen about that. And they reckon there are also 5,000 Australians leaving Australia every week and coming here. So I don't know if, how true that is. Do you? <laughs> Thanks, Gavin. Nice to hear from you, sir. Uh, hello to Sheila. Hello, little Sheila. Hello, my darling. Thank you for your card. She says, Chris, hello, listening to your shows as always. I wanted to let you know that I've been watching the new Gordon Ramsay's The F Word. It's great. I love to watch his shows. He's a super sexy, funny and a great chef. Keep up the work. Uh, great work. Uh, peace from Sheila. Do you think he's sexy? What, Gordon Ramsay? Oh, my word. Oh, he's a bit past it, isn't he, dear? What do you mean he's probably the same age as me? Yeah, I know that. I'm not going to fancy anyone my own age, am I? I told you before. I go about 25 to 35. Yeah, that's me. 25 to 35. How old am I? You know how old I am. I've just had a birthday, dear. 45. Does that make me a cradle snatcher? Fancying someone at 35? <laughs> oh, what can you do? What can you do? Um, Joe. It's, it's our Joe. Hello, Joe. How are you, sir? I hope the podcast is going well. He says, so Amy and I are flying home from Houston, Texas. Hello, come in Houston. This is Apollo 1. We haven't had that for a while, have we? Many spaceships going up there. Flying home from Houston, Texas yesterday, and we're listening to your February the 2nd show on the plane regarding the lie and pie episode. Yes. Yes, the lies, lion pie. What a seed planted. When we landed in Knoxville, we stopped at the first available McDonald's for a vanilla soft serve ice cream and a hot apple pie turnover. Oh, yes, and mixed them together. Fantastic. Have you never had ice cream with apple pie? Oh, dear. It's nice. Actually, I, I prefer apple pie all on its own. Yeah, I d I'm not keen at all on uh, apple pie with what well, I've a custard. I, I like custard, and I like ice cream, but I prefer the apple pie on its own. So I think it's quite nice. Now, Joe says, I don't know if I should read this out. Joe, he says, unfortunately, I now weigh twenty five stone. I don't believe you, Joe. Twenty five stone? That's twelve stone bigger than me, dear. Oh, hang on. 12, 24, 25, uh, 12, 22, 23, 24. A 13 stone more than me. You don't weigh 25, do you? Do you weigh 25 stone? <laughs> don't worry about it, I don't. That's a lie, isn't it? I do. Oh, I'm dreadful with my weight. Worrying, worrying, worrying all the time. He says, do you think I would make such a thing up? Well, I'm, I'm open so, Joe. It's not good, 25 stone, dear. We're not talking looks. What about your health? Cholesterol level? Uh, you know my cholesterol level. I did tell you on a previous show, didn't you? Huh? Did you? You did hear that, I hope. Yes. Very low. Uh, that's from Joe, Amy and uh, Ashley. Greenville, Tennessee, USA. Thank you. We, we do like an apple. Apple pie on its own is the best. Oh, don't start putting all things with it. Custard is nice. Ice cream is nice. Apple pie on its own. Oh! Delicious. With a little bit of cinnamon. Do you like cinnamon? A little bit of cinnamon in there. Cinnamon in there. And uh, hi to uh, Chris and Jerry. Eugene, or Eugene in Oregon. Nice to hear from you. Hope you're well there. Yes. See? Just, just a little note now and again to tell me that you're there. It's not too much, is it? Because I get, it's get, get worried. I get worried that I'm sitting here all on my own. A little bit worried. And how are we doing with the, um, the, the oldest listener? At the moment, the oldest listener at 80 years old, 
appears to be Joy, born in 1927. Who is the oldest listener to United Kingdom Talk? Joy, 19... Oh, hang on, I've got a job for Joy as well. Where's my list of jobs? Now, Joy, she listens to the programme via satellite, RTI, in, um, in Acton, in London. And Joy, what can she do? Let me just write down. Joy Acton, London. I know what Joy does. Joy is head of marmalade making. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. She makes marmalade. Head of marmalade. I tell you what, should we get her on the phone? One minute, let me, let me plug in my gadget. We'll get her on the phone. One second. I, I don't leave a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tight with the electricity now, I don't leave anything plugged in. The trouble is, of course, when you want to use it, you have to get on your hands and knees and plug the blooming thing in again. One minute. It's down here, isn't it? That's it. Let's get Joy on the phone. Oh, I've turned the phone... Oh, I wonder if I've got her number on my... Uh... No, I'll have to pick up the number now. One second. Right, where are we? I'm going to turn my mobile phone back on because I keep her number written on here. We'll get her on the phone quickly. She, she's got to agree to be head of marmalade, chief head of marmalade making. That's what we'll do. One second. It's just warming up. Do you like my mobile phone? I've got a Nokia... Um, what is this? A Nokia Sport. They had to replace it because the, the keypad all came off right. Just entering my PIN code. Notice I'm carefully shield, shielding it from YouTubers watching. Yes! Welcome to Nokia. Right, let's see. Let's see if we can find our number there. And we'll give Joy a quick one, because we haven't spoke to her this year, have we, yet? <clears throat> My other um, elderly lady friend, whose name is Gwen, she's not, she wasn't too well last week, unfortunately. She's got a bit of a, a bit of a chest infection there. Right, Joy, where are you, darling? How many emails have we got through? Not many. <laughs> Right, hang on a second then. Hang on. Let me just check this is working. I've got my dial tone. Where are we now? Oh, hang on, I've got... Oh, I'm not ready to do this at all, am I? Oh, I've got to plug something in now. That's it. One minute. Plug that in there. What have I got to do? Can we hear the dial tone? That's not the dial tone. That's because I've got the phone off the hook at the moment, right? Um. Ooh, right, here we go. Just dialing Joy's number. I hope she's going to be able to hear me as well. What have I got to do? Right, we're all set up. Let's ring the number and see if we can get older Joy. Uh, 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 uh. It's all very complex. Right, hang on a minute, hang on. Let's put that through there. I don't even know. She, what day is it today? Yeah, she'll be in. <clears throat> Hope she answers. She might have gone out. There she is. Hello. Hello, Joy. Hello, sweetheart. It's only me, dear. <laughs> do you feel any older, Chris? I've, uh, I do feel much older, Joy. I have to warn you because I know what your mouth is like. Uh, we are recording this. Oh, you're not. Yes, we're recording this, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll... listeners don't know what they're in for. They do know what they're in for. They've urged you once or twice before, as you know. You are quite a bit of a celebrity on this side of the world. An old celebrity, don't forget. Old? That's not... That's not... Yes, I've got... I was just saying, you are at the moment in the lead as our oldest listener at 80 years old, Joy. And that's fantastic. It's not bad, is it, eh? And, and I'm, here I am, a little lady that is pure as the driven snow. Pure as the driven snow? <laughs> don't make me laugh. You do make me laugh, dear. When we have our private conversations on the phone, your mouth is just something else. I, I mean, it, it really is. is. I, I can't help it, though, Chris. What you see is what you get. I mean, you would never speak... I bet you wouldn't speak to your children or grandchildren as you speak to me. Wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm noted for liking a laugh. <laughs> I like a laugh. <coughs> oh, Joy. Anyway, Joy, now I'm making a list. Yes. 
of uh, what we thought. Everyone who, who listens or watches United Kingdom talk... Oh, by the way, I put the DVD in a post last night. Oh, you're an angel. So I hope you have that tomorrow and you'll be able to see how... Because Joy, Joy doesn't actually own a computer. She listens to this programme uh, on the satellite. And uh, she wanted to watch it as well. So what I've done is put one of the shows on a DVD and popped oh, it in the you post here. Oh, right. oh, it's only a few pennies, Joy. Oh, bless um, you. But Joy, what I'm trying to do is is work a list of what people can do, and then what we're going to do all together is put some money in the pot and buy an entire town like Sydney. Oh, that's a good idea. Right? Isn't it? And then we all move there, and because of all the different things we do, we never have to pay for anything. We're that's just a do good for idea. each other. As long as they don't have traffic lights, Chris, because I can't cross oh. the traffic lights. No, we will. Don't worry about traffic lights. But so far, we've got Brian. Yes. He'll be coming from Ontario in Canada. He's going to be the chief engineer. Oh. And I just wanted to ask your permission, Joy. Uh, Joy Acton London, who is going to be head of marmalade making. Oh, brilliant. Is that all right, that Joy? Is the marmalade queen. The ma I, I like it. I like it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Ma <laughs> Marmalade Queen. That's better, oh Joy. Oh, my God. Yeah, we like that one. My marmalade. We like that one. Do you knit things for little babies as well? What's that? Um, you I crochet baby shawls. Well, hang on a minute. Marmalade Queen and oh, something of crochet. Crochet. Um, crochet. Let me think. Um. Uh, Crochet Cro shawl maker. Crochet concoctions. <laughs> <laughs> the mind boggles. All right. Joy in Acton, London, is the marmalade queen and cro and crochet... No, we won't have crochet concoctions. We'll just have marmalade queen. That, that's got oh. a lovely... That's well done, Joy. Yeah, that's what I say. I've become a queen in a little few minutes. You come out with things like that, don't you? Oh, we like it. All right, let me put that up there. Well done, well done. How are you, Joy? Yes, I'm not too bad at all. It's a nice day. Yeah. I'm full of the joys of spring at the moment. I'm having a day off of work. Yes. You see, I let your listeners know I still work. You do? What do you do, Joy? I do voluntary work at our hospital. No, I was talking about that on the last show. Is it the Women's Royal Voluntary Society? No, we work in the Friends of Hammersmith. Oh, I beg hospital. your pardon? Fre yeah, the Friends. Fre and what profit we make goes right into the hospital and you for do equipment. OK, so you work for Friends of Hammersmith Hospital. Yeah. Now, I was telling people, I think it was on the show last before this, um, you you make things and sell them and then you buy bits of equipment for the hospital. Is that That's right? That's exactly right, yeah. Joy, what have you bought in the past? What has we, all your money bought, bought in the past? We've bought a kidney dialysis machine. Kidney dialysis, yeah. yes. We bought equipped the um, intensive care with a television, a SETI and things like that for yes. comfort. Right. And we just buy so many different things, defibrillators for the heart wards. We always are buying. And also we pay for scholarships for up-and-coming uh, doctors. Yeah. And we, we raise a hell of a lot of money. And all of us work for nothing, as you know. That's and good, we're all Joy. elderly. Well, to be honest, Joy, I think I might... Now I'm 45 years old, <laughs> I am considering purchasing one of those defibrillator machines and just having it here in the house in case. Well, that's in case. You'd in never case. Know. It might be How much are they? Oh, they're expensive. I mean, all that equipment is expensive. And the government won't buy it. So that's what the friends do. Right, OK. Is, is there anything... Do, do, you, do you kind of... Um, do, you, do you just keep collecting the money or do you decide, right, this is what we want to buy next? So, so how does that work? Well, what happens is they buy stock in for the yeah. shop. We sell nearly everything. Toiletries and everything. Baby clothes and... Towels and, and marmalade, flannels. marmalade, and yes, marmalade, yeah, 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 yeah. Your marmalade. And then what we do, um, we we pay for the stock that we buy in, but all the stuff that's donated to us from shops that close down and all that is sole profit. Okay. And every year you get, I'll have to give you one of our books. Every year there's a break. Is there a little, our little catalogue? Do you have work. a catalogue? Do you? No, we don't have a catalogue, but we have a yearly book to let people know where every penny goes. Oh, an accounts book, I'm with yeah, you. And yeah, and it really, yeah. really is, yeah, yeah. It is good. And we do a lot. And we also have got a room with good as new clothing for people that go home from hospital to, with nothing. 
we rig them out with clothing so they go home in comfort. Oh, nice. Yeah. We do good work, Chris, although I say it myself. So you, you just keep collecting the money. Yeah, or as, as I what? say, do, do they say, right, now we want to buy this, and then you start saving up for that? No, what? yeah, what happens is they put people request what they need for their wards. OK. And so we have to come up with the one we think is the most important. So what are you collecting for at the moment? At the moment, I've no idea. I think it's something to do with the renal. The what? The renal, the kidneys and all oh, that. Oh, kidneys. It yeah. might be another dial dialysis machine yeah. or something you like see, that. So I think it's for that, but, I mean, we do it for um, uh, diabetes clinics. Yeah. We do it for everything, Chris. All right, that's, that's a good job. Yeah, it is. It makes me feel good. I, come home, I really come home tired, but I feel as though they were very good to my husband in there, and I feel like I'm paying them back a little bit. Right, OK. The fr the Friends of Hammersmith Hospital, then, that's that that's it. where you work. Are, are you in charge, Joy? No. Or, oh, you're not in no, charge? No, there's nobody's oh. in charge. We're all volunteers, but right. we've, we've got our um, administrator. Yeah. You know, we go... Oh, oh, we don't do administrators, dear. <laughs> you know me, dear. We don't do administrators or office people. They're just... Oh, God. And I'll tell you something else we do, Chris. <laughs> when a patient comes in yeah. and some sad news, yeah. which we get a lot of, yeah. we sit them down and we chat and, until they feel better yeah. and then they can go home. Okay. And that is what it's about. You see, that's where the word friends comes in. That's nice. That's friends lovely, that is. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is a nice job. But it really is worthwhile. Mm. I go to bed feeling I've done something with my life. Yeah, yeah. I'll if tell I you what. To work, I would just be nah. making marmalade. No. Nah. <laughs> Selling it on the doorstep. Yeah. Now you, you've uh, had a couple of people. I, I, I wasn't going to come on to this, but now that now that you mentioned, you know, when someone passes over, and maybe you can be the friend of someone. Um, I've got a bit of sad news here from someone. Actually, Happy. yeah. I don't know if you remember. We sang happy birthday to an elderly lady, Alice. Oh yeah, that was a little while ago. Do you remember that it was yeah. back in uh, early December? Uh, and I've just got um, this, this today actually, I just got this email through and I'll read this to you. And it says, hi Chris, uh, because I, you know, sometimes I do keep in contact with uh, friends and listeners uh, by the email, especially the, yeah. the ones that write regularly to us. And uh, it says, hi Chris, it was so kind, this is from Judy, who's in, uh, oh, yeah. in New Jersey, okay, in the States. It was so kind of you to ask about my mum Alice back in early December. Though frail, she was still with us 100% in mind and spirit. Now, as you remember, she had a black eye because she she had fallen over. Oh. Okay. Sadly, she suffered a terrible fall next to her bed early in the morning on December the 19th. Uh, my brother, who is uh, mentally handicapped, was standing there to help, but unfortunately she lost her balance and oh, he couldn't catch please. her. Uh, and she goes on, I, I won't describe it all, but um, unfortunately... Um, she had fractured her pelvis, among other injuries for the fall. Uh, she had asthma, bad lungs, and could not withstand the injuries. Her heart gave out and she passed out that oh, night. Chris. And, you know, that's so sad. Um, and uh, Judy goes on to say, I would not have wanted her to live with all the pain and struggle she would have to endure. Sorry, are you all right there, Joy? Yeah, that's so sad, isn't it? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to upset no, you. No, I know, but that is so sad. Yeah, I, I, I'm asking you because you've got the experience here, Joy, the same as I have, of course, yeah. with my mum and dad. No, but it's, it's really sad, but all, what you, you can, the only thing you can do is to console the person that is, is, is grieving with the fact that she's not going to suffer anymore. Yeah, well, Ju Judy will listen to this. Yeah. She listens to all the shows. If you to say <laughs> to Judy that she's not going to suffer anymore. And then, as you said, that that one of your listeners said, if she looks up into the sky, what she thinks the stars might be her mum looking down on her. Yeah. Do you remember yeah, what, that, Chris? What are the stars? They yeah. are little windows in the sky exactly. to heaven. Exactly. And it can yeah. be all your loved ones looking down on you. I think that's a lovely thing, It is nice. I still and people, swear... That, once again, that, that saying is, the stars are windows from heaven looking exactly. down on us all. That, yes. That's just and a I lovely know that my, my saying. My husband is with me every minute of every day. Yeah, yeah. Because when cause, I pull the weeds up, I hear a bird squawk loudly, and I find myself saying, all right, then, I'm sorry. It's I'm probably pulled. not the birds, Joy, it's the weeds. You're yeah, hurting yeah, them, dear. I, I, pull, <laughs> I pull flowers up instead of weeds. Let me finish off the email. Um, 
Uh, she says, uh, I would not have wanted her to live with all the pain and struggle she would have to endure, but it is very painful to lose your mother, and I, I know you well know. Aww. I have always been touched by your devotion to your parents and grandparents. Yeah, uh, That uh, is lovely, Chris. Yeah. So it's not been an easy time for us right now, but our family, seven brothers and sisters... Yes, yeah, so yeah, you'll find brothers, they big get a lot of there. love, you know. The more people very... the family, the more love. Yes, you're, you're very lucky to have so many brothers yeah. and sisters there. And we're... At least they can console one another, yeah, can't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, and we are getting through this. I think it's a bit hard since Mum lived with them, you see. They were looking after her. That, that's very hard, especially if, they live, if she was living, of course, in the same house. Um, Judy goes on to say, in any event, we were blessed to have her with her for so long. Because she, she, she got over... Um, did she get over 90? Do you remember how old she was, Joy? Well, she was mm. el very elderly, wasn't she? I'm sure she was over 90, Jude. Um, but look at the memories they Alice. got, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some... They must have... If she lived with them, they, yeah. they must well, have some here's, really lovely memories. Here's the really nice part of the letter. I'm just now catching up on your recent shows, because she listens to the older ones when she misses them, and want to thank you again for your lovely wishes and singing Happy Birthday for my mum. Oh. On her birthday, she really did enjoy it. Take care from Judy. Oh, that is so and, nice. Uh, isn't yeah, it? because I I do remember Alice, and we got, yeah. I got a picture from. Oh, her. I can remember and, that. Yeah, we, obviously you didn't see the picture because uh, you know you, you listened to the show, but yeah. um, and the picture of 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 Alice, she actually looked very much like my my one of my nans, Nanny oh. Ryan. Oh, that was who had nice. the, like the grey curly hair and the glasses oh, yeah, and all that, and she a, did a proper mum. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But so, I do wish Judy all the best and her family. And tell her that she's got her memories, and if you can, and and if you can remember what sort of perfume Mum liked, just whenever you you get the smell of that or the soap Mum use, you you know she's near you. That's, That's a lovely I thing, isn't think. it? Yeah, it's smells. Lovely. Smells stick in your brain now and again. It's funny actually. Quite often I can be um, sitting there, and, and I can and I smell Mum's roast potatoes. Yeah, but <laughs> Isn't that what, and, and, and mum's roast potatoes, yeah. they smelt completely different from all yeah, everyone else's. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what she used to put in them. Yeah, it, it's true. And I, whenever mm. I smell lavender, I think, I know my mum's near. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, I yeah, smell, yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. Lavender yeah. soap, lavender yeah, perfume. Yeah. yeah. And I know she's near, and that will come. But it's, it, I mean, now it's still raw days, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I did have another email here. Funnily, funny, funny we should start talking about this. I had no intention intention of going on to this on the show, but um, from another uh, listener, uh, listener and viewer, uh, who wants to remain nameless, this one, he says, not intended for publication, so no names on this one, but um, he was saying about six years ago his mum had a major stroke and been uh, partially paralysed in a nursing oh, home ever yeah. since, um, and now she, she doesn't, uh, uh, let me see, um, sorry, I've, I've got a bit lost here, uh, for a while... Um, she didn't even recognise him. That is sad, isn't it? And I, you know, when when that happens, it's just um, mm. it's awful. Yeah. I know, I know. I, I I don't mind talking now because she's gone. But um, certainly, my mum, when she 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 did go in a a, a how can you say a head hospital, a head yeah, hospital, yeah. and uh, for a while in there, she had the deep depression. What is it? What is it called, Joy? <laughs> Um, well, I really don't really know. Really deep depression. Yeah, that is it. that when you get, you get underlying depression, very deep. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what that's called. Anyway, uh, when someone ha goes that far into depression, when you're talking to them, yeah. it's like talking to a brick wall. There's yeah, nothing coming back, and that's really, really, really it's it's almost more painful than watching someone have a terrible disease. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? I mean, it, it, it's no worse or no better, of course. No. You know, but the point is, you, 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 uh, when someone's perhaps in a hospital or something like that and they're very ill and you can say, oh, oh you know, you know... You'll soon be better. Try and think you'll soon be better and all this. Yeah. And they can talk back to, oh, I don't feel well and all this. Yeah, but when it. you have deep depression, it literally is talking to someone as if you're talking to a brick wall. There's yeah, nothing coming health, back. Chris, that, <clears throat> if you've got a mental illness like that, it is, it's worse, I think, yeah. because there is always hope for yes. um, anybody with a broken yeah, arm. Yeah, and it's very, very difficult. Anyway, uh, this person says, well, <clears throat> again, uh, my mum passed away over Christmas, New Year's holiday, and uh, Dad is now 88, very hard of hearing, poor vision, 
that he's now looking after his dad the best he can. So um, um, there we are. Uh, it's his a cool mum, old world, isn't it? Yeah, his mum passed away on the 30th of December 2007, so quite close uh, at the same time as Alice. I bet they're up there now, you know, I having a good old are. chat. Yeah, I bet they are. Alice bet and uh, to put our world to right. I don't know what what um, what is what his mum's name is. He doesn't write down what his mum's name is. He wouldn't mind me reading out that. Let me see. It's, uh, it is very very sad, Chris, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it I, is. I mean, it's like. My mum, she had Alzheimer's towards the end, and she didn't even know me, and I was her only daughter. No, that's what that's what he's saying. That's yeah. what this one's saying. But I mean, now... I was the only girl, two brothers and myself, and she didn't know me. She used to say, I had a little girl like you. Yeah. And she could uh... remember me as a child. And uh, she didn't remember you. Horrible, it is. Well, only only towards the end, though. But they're up there now, you know, having a chin wag, yeah. probably a cup of tea and a slice of cake. Look at those silly ones downstairs, what they got to put up with. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that weird and again, oh, he needs professional help. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Look at the state of her. That'd be me going to work. <laughs> Joy, thanks ever so much for talking to us, darling. A pleasure as All always, right. And you are, of course, head of marmalade making oh, now, I right, am. my darling? And old, and old, don't forget the, um, <laughs> the year I was born, Christopher. What's that? Yeah, 1927, yeah, I've got that. I mean, you 1927. Joy is our oldest listener, <laughs> aren't you? See you, Joy. God bless you, Chris. Bye-bye, my love. Bye. Lovely to talk to you. There we are. There's our Joy talking to us uh, from Acton. Hopefully, um, with, with, with a few nice words for you there, uh, Judy, and indeed uh, the other person who wrote in. Now, I'm really sorry that uh, you've both lost your mums um, this year. I... I Worst thing ever that happened to me. You know, it, it's funny. Over the years, you think you've done bad things or terrible things have happened, and uh, when you lose your mum like that, it's just. It, I know not everyone is close to their parents, and it's funny when uh, certainly in the job I do in uh, DJing and uh, meeting young people all the time, and when they don't get on with their parents. Um, now that mine are gone, you, you you can say to them, look, you know, be nice and get on with your parents because when they go, you will be sorry. You will be so sorry that you ever rowed or had any sort of disagreement. All right, so Judy and uh, the other person, good luck to you. My heart goes out to you. And uh, I'm afraid it's time for me to go now, boys and girls. Thank you, as always, for joining me for United Kingdom Talk. Uh... The email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You have a good few days, and I'll see you on the next show. From myself, Chris Redden, bye-bye.